Welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the language of mathematics that is often used in algebra. Now, translations from math symbols to verbal statements is easy. Why is that? Well, the reason is because there are many ways, many, many ways, to say something verbally in English and probably in any language because there are many synonyms. So there are many ways to say it verbally. And I'll just write in English here, but this could apply to any language. So for example, let's say that we wanted to translate the math statements into verbal statements here. So here we have, now the easy one is if we just read it off, this would be x plus five equals seven. Now x actually represents a number. So another way we could say this is five more than a number is seven. But we can also start with a number. So we can say a number increased by five is seven. We can even say the sum of a number and five is seven. Now all of these words, the sum of, more than, increased by, they all mean that a number is added to five and then we get seven. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here we have x divided by three is four. So again, we have x, which is our number, and we can write a number divided by three is four. So notice that our is is always our equals. Another way we can say this is a third of a number because that's what divided by three is. So a third of a number is four. And then finally, we can even also say a number, or sorry, the quotient of a number in three is four. So all of these mean the same thing, that we are taking a number and we're splitting it into three parts. So we can see that there are many, many ways to translate these math statements into English sentences. However, how many ways are there to translate a verbal statement into math? Now, in that sense, most of the time, there is only one. So let's take a look at some examples. All right, here we have some verbal statements on the left-hand side, and we're gonna translate these statements into math symbols or into algebraic expressions. So here's the first one. So we have a number. So many people think a number um, usually is represented by n, but you can actually use any variable you want. So you can use n, you can use x, you can even use y, okay? So the next one is two more than a number. So two more than, so we have a number, and then we have two more than that number. We could also say two plus n. So that also works that we have two, and then we have that plus n. And the next one is a number increased by two. So increase by, again, means adding. So we have a number and we increase it by two. Usually that means n plus two. It sounds a little bit nicer than two plus n because we have a number and then it's increased by two. Now the next one is five less than a number. So in this case, we have to start with the number and then we have five less than that. So this will be n minus five. So can we go five minus n? Well, in this case, this would be different because if the number was, let's say six, and we went five less than the number, that would be six minus five, okay? And that would give us one. But if we reverse that and we go five minus six, we actually get negative one. So these two expressions do not mean the same thing. So when you see five less than a number, usually we wanna start with the number first, 
and then we're going to minus 5 after. So we are going to cross this one off. Okay, the next one is 5 decreased by a number. So again, we start with this time the number 5, and we're going to decrease it, so minus the number n. All right, so can we go n minus 5? So just like the reason before, these do not mean the same thing. So these expressions are different. So let's cross off the second one. All right, for f, twice the number, that is 2n, one-third of a number, which we talked about above, that would be one-third of n, or you can actually also have n divided by 3. All right. Quotient. So quotient means we're going to divide, and it's a quotient of 4 and a number. So the word 4 comes first, so 4 has to go in the numerator, and the number has to go in the denominator. And the very last one here, it says 2 less than, and then 4 times the number. So remember from before, I had said, whenever we see the word less than or more than, we usually want that number, the 2, to be at the back. So we're going to go 2 less than, so that means it's going to be minus 2. And what do we start with? 4 times a number. So this will be 4n. All right, so here are some examples of translating a verbal statement into math symbols.